As the only instance of the high-speed train design being sold to a foreign railway company, the XPT, or Express Passenger Train sets, were first introduced in southeast Australia during 1981, presenting to the railways of New South Wales a revolution in long-distance train travel, not dissimilar to what had occurred with the original HSTs of the UK. The XPT story goes back to 1976, as while the prototype HST was undergoing trials in the UK, and production sets were starting to be rolled out on the Great Western Main Line from London Paddington during October of that year, a state election was being held in the Australian Territory of New South Wales, with incumbent Liberal Premier Eric Willis being challenged for his position by Labour Party candidate Neville Wran, the premiership of the Liberal Party being one mired in unpopular controversy following the retirement of four-term Premier Sir Robert Askin. In January 1975, his replacement, Tom Lewis, being dropped as Premier after only a year due to his appointment of the Liberal Mayor of Albury, Cleaver Bunton, into a senatorial position previously occupied by Labour member Lionel Murphy, a move which sparked outrage across both sides of the political spectrum and saw him ousted through a vote of no confidence in favour of Willis. Amid the crumbling image of the Liberal Party, Labour Party candidate Neville Wran committed his prospective government to revitalising the ageing infrastructure of New South Wales, most notably the railway system, which comprised a mixture of high-intensity commuter services into and out of Sydney and long-distance express trains which travelled to the Australian capital of Canberra and other regional centres such as Newcastle and Broken Hill. The operation of the railways, together with bus and ferry services in New South Wales, having been undertaken by the Public Transport Commission, or PTC, since its formation in October 1972 under the Public Transport Commission Act, this being a state-owned organisation which, controversially, had enacted large cutbacks in track mileage and services in order to reduce costs while under the control of the first Chief Commissioner, Philip Shirley who, in his previous capacities, had been involved in the beaching cuts of the British Railway Network during the 1960s. By 1976, the PTC operated an increasingly decrepit fleet of rolling stock, which largely dated back at least 20 years, including loco-hauled passenger services powered by 1950s-built 4-2-class and 4-4-class cab units, derived from the electromotive diesel F9 locomotives of North America. While on the run between Parks and Broken Hill, the Silver City Comet Diesel Multiple Unit, an Art Deco stainless steel express train reminiscent of the Burlington's Pioneer Zephyr, continued to ply its trade even 40 years after it had first been introduced, the most modern equipment in PTC's arsenal being the 1972-built S-sets constructed for the Sydney commuter service by Commonwealth Engineering, or ComEng, which were notable for having no air conditioning and thus earned the name Sweat Sets. Owing to the continued stagnation of the railway system in New South Wales and the ineffectiveness of the PTC to introduce significant improvements in order to win back passengers from domestic air services and the Australian National Highway System, Neville Rann, who had won the 1976 state election with 49% of the vote, ordered the PTC to undertake early studies into potential upgrades to railway operations in the Territory, primarily on the longer distance expresses which carried the heaviest burden of losses while high-intensity commuter trains and freight trains were able to maintain a steady profit. In response, the PTC invited from January 1978 a series of tenders for 25 high-speed railcars, which were similar to the Western Australian Government Railway's WCE-class railcars of 1971, these diesel units having been built by Comenge at their Granville Works in New South Wales in response to the opening of the standard gauge mainline between Perth and Kalgoorlie in mid-1969. These 93 mile an hour machines capable of completing the 406 mile journey in a mere 8 hours, and thus allowed for the replacement of the previous 14 hour Kalgoorlie overnight sleeping train with a daytime service called the Prospector, making it the fastest train in Australia upon the start of operations on November 29th of that year. However, while the WCE class had illustrated superb performance on the Prospector run, Comenge's eyes were drawn to the United Kingdom where after just over a year in service, the Intercity 125 sets, also known as high-speed trains, had illustrated a major revolution on long-distance journeys within Great Britain. The sturdy design of two power cars and eight brand-new Mark III trailers, presenting incredible flexibility and reliability, while also delivering a superb 125 mile an hour service speed, bringing major regional centres such as Bristol, Bath, Peterborough and Swindon to within easy commuting distance of London. Seeing the remarkable success of the HSTs, which was reflected through a huge resurgence in passenger numbers on long-distance express services on the Great Western and East Coast main lines, Comenge submitted a tender for a brand new express passenger train, 
which would be based on the fundamental principles of the Intercity 125 once a license to build a derivative design had been secured from British Rail Engineering Limited. These sets comprising two power cars at either end of five car train sets, which would be propelled by D-rated versions of the Paxman Valenta power units from the British HST, tuning down their potential output from 2,250 horsepower to 2,000 horsepower, and thus presenting a top service speed of 99 miles an hour. In 1979, Following the submission of bids from other Australian railway manufacturers, Comend were announced to have successfully won the contract to build what was meant to be originally 100 vehicles, comprising 30 power cars and 70 carriages. But due to the continuing losses of the PTC, as the rail services of New South Wales remained largely uncompetitive, this order was cut back to only 30 vehicles by the time Comend signed the contract in March 1980, the final build-out for this new fleet of Australian HSTs being 10 power cars and 20 carriages which would form four five-car sets, with two power cars being kept as spares. Construction of both power cars and coaching stock would be undertaken at Comenge's Granville Works, while due to the Mark III carriage from the original HST not being suitable for the harsh conditions of the Australian railway system, a more robust design was developed, in which the trailers were built to a bud-inspired stainless steel aesthetic. The power car designs differing from those of the British HST by way of being approximately 20 inches shorter and featuring a revised light cluster arrangement, which included high beam spotlights fitted to the cab roof, while the air filters and mast and cooling systems were modified to cater for the hot and dusty Australian conditions. As these new sets were being assembled, the PTC was disbanded and replaced by two new transport authorities under the Transport Authorities Act of 1980, which, from July 1st of that year, created the State Rail Authority, which was responsible for the operation and maintenance of the railway system, and the Urban Transit Authority, which operated the bus and ferry systems for Sydney and Newcastle. The splitting of bus and ferry services into their own authority, allowing for a greater focus improving the ailing railway system by the SRA, the primary goal being to revitalise longer distance expresses. In the end, the first power car and trailer underwent acceptance tests during August 1981 the trains being christened the name XPT or Express Passenger Train, and were outshopped in a red, orange and black livery, somewhat reminiscent of the newly introduced intercity executive colours that had been applied to the prototype Advanced Passenger Train or APT of the UK. The XPT proving its worth on September 6th of the same year, when, during a test run to Albury, the first set achieved a top speed of 120 miles an hour between Tabletop and Yerong Creek a speed record for Australian trains which would remain unbeaten until May 1999, when a Queensland rail electric tilt train achieved a top speed of 130 miles an hour. Entering revenue service from April 8, 1982, the first XPT operations began with the 288-mile Central West Express from Sydney to Dubbo, replacing 4-2 and 4-3 class locomotives and reducing the journey time to 6 hours and 30 minutes, while the Mid-North Coast XPT to Kempsey followed a month later and the Riverina XPT to Albury in August. The phenomenal success of the XPT in providing reliable, flexible and modern transport for passengers on long-distance expresses, giving the SRA the incentive to order a further five power cars and 15 trailers from 1983, allowing for the start of the Canberra XPT from August of that year, which shaved 50 minutes off the journey time, and the Northern Tablelands XPT to Glen Innes and Tenterfield in June 1984. While the XPT was an incredible success, there were a few early blunders by the SRA in order to try and give these trains an air of exclusivity above the regular intercity express services, including the implementation of a surcharge for passenger fares, which cost more than ticket prices aboard locomotive hauled services, a move which was abolished in May 1985 after passengers preferred the slower but cheaper older stock to the more expensive XPT. While through the tightening of certain diagrams, one XPT set was allocated to an overnight service called the South XPT, which ran between Sydney and Albury. But this was axed in June 1985, as, due to this train not being a dedicated sleeper service, the all-coach seating arrangement was unpopular among overnight travellers, and thus led to poor patronage. Furthermore, from October 1985, the Mid-North Coast XPT to Kempsey was axed and replaced by the Holiday Coast XPT to Grafton, while the Northern Tablelands XPT was also cut back to Armidale, and only ran on alternate days. With a loco hauled set running on those days, the XPT didn't. Proposals to extend XPT operations to Melbourne from February 1985 also being mooted, with the costs of running the service being shared by the state-owned operator of Victoria, V-Line, and seeing several demonstration and crew training runs being conducted on the North East Line between Albury and Benalla, 
during July of that year, pending a start of service from August 3rd. But due to the inability for an agreement to be reached with the Australian Federated Union of Locomotive Employees over crewing, the proposal to run an XPT service to Melbourne was ultimately shelved. A fundamental problem of the XPT was the fact that these train sets had been designed primarily to cater for a high-quality mainline railway system, with smooth, well-maintained track work that was kept at a minimum level of quality so as to allow for these sets to run at their proposed service speed of 100 miles an hour. But due to the years of neglect and underfunding for the railway systems of New South Wales, the condition of the infrastructure upon which the XPTs were expected to run was so abhorrent that in the end, these trains yielded very few speed improvements over the regular locomotive hauled stock only winning passengers through the fact that their modern interior accommodation, which had been based on the seating configuration of the HST, was a marked improvement over the ageing loco-hauled coaches, many of which dated back to the late 1940s. There was hope for the XPT, though, in the form of export sales, the more rugged design of these train sets when compared to the original HSTs of the UK, meaning they were perfectly suited for railway systems with rough track work that operated in extremely humid conditions one of the most promising export proposals coming from the State Railway of Thailand in 1983, which wanted to expand its railway system across the nation, but had only a supply of sluggish diesel rail cars to operate the service. The Thai Railways designating any potential new stock for the improved service as enhanced performance trains, but unfortunately lacked experience when it came to pinning down the necessary specifications for an appropriate design. Therefore, through the encouragement of Austrade, the Australian government's trade export department, Comenge saw this as a golden opportunity to provide consultation to the Thai Railways with a possible view of presenting an export model of their own stock which would be tailored to the narrower 3 foot 3 inch gauge of Thailand's rail system, although one drawback of the consultation were limits to the speed at which the enhanced performance trains could operate on Thailand's railways due to a propensity by the local population to create their own makeshift self-propelled handcarts and rail wagons. These lightweight, homemade vehicles being easy to lift off the tracks and then re-rail in the event a service train was encountered, this trend among the Thai locals only being achievable due to the incredibly slow speed of regular trains. Amid potential discussions for Comenge's proposed train for Thailand being built by a local manufacturer, with shells and other components being shipped for final assembly in a factory outside Bangkok, the Thai Minister of Transport was incredibly enthusiastic about Comenge's proposal and thus several Comeng engineers travelled to Thailand in order to measure the dimensions of the railway network so as to inform a bespoke design. The XPT, as the company's latest model and one which had been tailored to a rough and under-maintained railway network, being the most logical option. The Comeng team proposing a metre gauge variant of the train, which would retain the same fuel capacity by extending the power cars by a length of 8 foot 10 inches, while a three bogey wheel configuration would be adopted in order to keep the train within the Thai Railway's axle load limits. In 1985, the proposed Thai XPT was progressing rapidly, with incredible enthusiasm being exhibited from both sides, Comeng quickly being able to draft a full XPT train set concept for Thailand's railways, while the Thai government would build a brand new Comeng factory outside Bangkok in order to allow for final assembly of the trains to be undertaken, supported further by permission being granted by BREL to allow the construction of a derivative XPT under the same license agreed with the original HST design under the condition that the royalties be the same as those which had been agreed with Comeng for the New South Wales units, while Alco, which would provide a smaller sized power unit that fit within the dimensions of the Thai XPT power car, were also willing to supply the necessary engines. Such was the hope placed in the Thai XPT scheme, that in August of that year, Neville Rann wrote a handwritten letter to the Thai Minister of Communications, giving Comeng and the XPT a glowing endorsement and a contract was drafted that would see these train sets sold to Thailand for a publicly stated total cost of $124 million. Although in reality the deal was worth up to $900 million, but this figure was kept quiet so as not to attract the attention of Japanese, French or Canadian train builders who could lodge their own counter bid. The dawn of 1986 seeing everything neatly in place to have the contract signed for construction to begin on both the new Comeng factory in Bangkok and the first Thai XPT units. A service pattern, including timetables, routes and a leasing agreement, having been finalised in preparation for the start of services sometime in early 1987. Sadly, in May 1986, the rug was pulled out from under the entire scheme, when Comeng received a phone call stating that, for reasons that remain elusive even to this day, the Australian government had axed all its support of the Thai XPT project, and without state funding to help bring the scheme to fruition, a devastated Comeng was forced to withdraw its proposals, just as its directors were quite literally boarding a flight to Bangkok in order to sign the construction contract, 
the State Railway of Thailand eventually opting for 80 to 100 mile an hour diesel rail cars in order to run longer distance trains, including the Nippon built NFK sets of 1985 and the ASR class of 1991, which was a tailored variant of the British Rail class 158 Express Sprinter unit. Further to the loss of the Thai deal in 1986, during that same year, Neville Rann announced his surprise retirement after 10 years as the new South Wales Premier, being subsequently replaced by Barry Unsworth, who would hold the seat for two years until his government was defeated in a landslide result for Liberal National Country Coalition candidate Nick Greiner, which saw a swing of 8% in his favour, Greiner wasting no time in implementing price hikes for public sector infrastructure and services, but major cost cuts across the entire remit of the state's responsibilities, the biggest victim of these being the railway network, which despite the improvements demonstrated by the ever-increasing XPT system, were not enough to stem the significant losses being incurred by the SRA. Therefore, Griner commissioned the American management company, Booz Allen Hamilton, to undertake an audit of the New South Wales railway systems, and based entirely on its economic performance, proposed the closure of all long-distance and rural passenger services, as they were deemed not economically viable, a verdict which was met with stern opposition from both the public and the railway unions, and thus could not be implemented without committing political suicide, the Griner government instead basing the future direction of long-distance express services solely on XPT operations, while the less viable country services would be replaced by intercity coaches, a move which had been presented as an alternative by the Booz Allen Hamilton audit. In response, the SRA established a new subsidiary firm called CountryLink as part of the Transport Administration Act of 1988. This new company, formed in January 1989, being placed in charge of all non-metropolitan long-distance passenger services and thus inherited the entire fleet of XPT sets and what loco hauled services remained, the focus of CountryLink being to reinforce XPT operations on trunk routes between major regional centres and trimming back on the less viable services such as the Silver City Comet, which was axed in November of the same year after 52 years of service. While in February 1990, the Brisbane Limited and Pacific Coast Motor Rail services were withdrawn and replaced by XPTs, allowing these trains, for the first time, to run outside of New South Wales and into Queensland. But this came at the expense of the Canberra XPT, which was axed in order to provide the surplus sets necessary to work to Brisbane, this operation being taken over by locomotive hauled stock. From June 1990, the Griner government, in an attempt to see off the last remaining loco hauled expresses with brand new rolling stock, placed an order for 17 three-car diesel multiple units known as Explorers, which were built by ABB Transportation at their Dandenong Works, and were introduced on the Armadale and Moree services, as well as replacing long-distance coaches on the Canberra run, allowing for the release of an XPT set to work the Grafton Express, improving its diagram from weekly under loco hauled operation to daily with the XPT. Explorer sets entering service in October 1993, followed by an order for an additional four sets from November 1994. In addition, having noted the failure of the XPT to provide a viable sleeper train alternative with coach seating only, the government announced that, for the Brisbane and Murwillumba runs, as well as another potential stab at a service to Melbourne, a set of eight brand new dedicated sleeping coaches would be ordered from ABB during October 1990, which would include compartments with day bench seating and fold-down bunk beds for overnight runs, these carriages eventually being delivered in 1991 alongside four new power cars and 13 additional trailer vehicles the construction costs of which would be shared by the New South Wales and Victorian state governments, the stylish intercity orange livery being replaced by a new country link livery which comprised white and two-tone blue. In the end, 19 XPT power cars and 61 trailers had been produced by the time the last examples were released in 1994, representing 80% of the original 100 vehicle order made back in 1979. While in November 1993, XPT operations between Sydney and Melbourne were finally made with the start of an overnight service to replace loco hall trains, followed a year later by daytime XPT services, which formed an extension of the Riverina XPT from Albury, achieving what had originally been envisaged back in 1985 to connect the largest centres of New South Wales and Victoria, the Melbourne Daylight XPT, completing the run in around 11 hours and performing four trips per day. Throughout the 1990s, Further attempts to improve the XPT came in the form of three tilting carriages from the highly successful Swedish Railways X2000, this European electric multiple unit having been purpose-built to reduce journey times on the notoriously winding rail corridors of the Nordic nation without the need for major infrastructural changes, and thus was considered perfectly suitable for the curving mainline routes across New South Wales. 
the three carriages being tested with two XPT power cars between April and June 1995 on the Sydney to Canberra run, but ultimately failed to see entry into service. In June 2000, seeing the age of the original Paxman Valenta power units, these engines were replaced by an updated version dubbed the VP185, which had been trialled since 1994 on four HST power cars in the UK, and illustrated a significant improvement in efficiency over the Valentas, the 2001 horsepower engines married to traction equipment supplied by Brush of Loughborough in England, eventually replacing all Valenta-powered units by 2001, while the naming convention for the power cars incorporated the cities served by the XPT network, including Brisbane, Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne. During its operation, the XPT has unfortunately not been unfamiliar with accidents or incidents, the first being on May 3rd, 1991, when, after departing Henty Station, the Riverina XPT passed a signal at danger and derailed at low speed, causing the lead power car to roll onto its side, injuring the driver and six passengers, although the locomotive was later recovered and repaired. On January 27, 2001, the Riverina XPT was again involved in a crash when the set struck a car on a level crossing for the Olympic Highway at Gerogeri, New South Wales, resulting in the deaths of all five occupants of the car and causing the derailment of the XPT set, this accident being one of several fatal collisions at level crossings across the New South Wales railway network, and thus led to a concerted effort by the railway authorities to replace as many grade crossings as possible with overbridges or underbridges, as was the case with the Olympic Highway at Gorogory which was put onto an overpass in December 2005. The worst accident involving the XPT took place on February 20, 2020, when the Riverina XPT, approaching Wallen, Victoria, approximately 28 miles north of its terminus at Melbourne, entered a 10 mile an hour passing loop at around 81 miles an hour and jumped the tracks, causing the train to derail and the leading power car and several coaches to flip over, killing the driver and the pilot, while also injuring 61 passengers, the cause of the accident, as of early 2022, still being under investigation, although it is speculated that, based on the last second emergency brake application, the driver may have become disorientated and not realised he was approaching the passing loop, through which all trains were being diverted that day due to engineering work on the main line. Today, XPTs are used on services from Sydney to Grafton, Casino, Brisbane, Dubbo and Melbourne, with each set, excluding the Dubbo XPT, being rotated on a seven-day cycle to all of the remaining four destinations, while maintenance is conducted at the specially built XPT service centre near Sydenham Station, which was opened in 1981 alongside the introduction of the trains, the depot also providing service to the Explorer rail cars and Endeavour units built by ABB in 1994. However, as part of the New South Wales state elections for 2015, the government of Mike Baird stated its commitment to replacing not only the XPTs, but also the 23 Explorer sets and 28 Endeavour units, with Bombardier, CAF and Downer being shortlisted to build brand new train sets during 2017, the final winner of the bid to construct the replacement rolling stock being announced in February 2019 as Momentum Trains, a consortium of CAF, DIF Infrastructure and Pacific Partnerships which will comprise a $2.8 billion order for 117 bi-mode carriages to form 29 four-car sets based on the CAF Civity design, each of which are due to commence operation from 2023. Nevertheless, while the XPTs are now facing their retirement as development of the new sets built by CAF gets underway, one cannot understate the impact these superb trains have had on the operation of long-distance express services across New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria as even though the conditions of the track work and a hesitancy by the state government has stunted the overall potential of these highly versatile express trains, they were still able to provide an efficient, reliable and modern replacement to the ageing loco hold stock that preceded them, mirroring the similar success story of the original HSTs of the UK by bringing a new era of speed and comfort to the long-distance passenger market. <laughs>